Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today I've got a bit of an exciting video as I am now going to be moving my main system Big Red into the all new Factor Design Torrent Compact case. Now if you're subscribed to the channel you've probably seen that I've already done a review of this case so I won't be going into too much detail regarding the case itself but I'm very excited to see how my system performs in this new case. But not everything is going to be as simple as just moving my main system into this as there are going to be a couple of changes that I need to think about. Most notably is going to be in regards to my cooling. Now as you can see I have a 240mm rad in the top of my case which is really ideal but in the Torrent Compact that's not possible due to the top mounted PSU shroud. So the only place I can mount a 240 rad or even the bottom which would not be advisable due to the location of the pump being above the tubes or instead in the front. Then the only problem there is if I use the rad in the front, I'm not actually able to use these 180mm fans which I really would quite like to use, but they're only going to be able to fit in the front if I'm using an ATX motherboard, and I can't put them in the bottom for intake because it would block the connectors on the bottom of my motherboard. So if I use an AIO, I am going to be missing out on these fans. But what I'm thinking is depending on how this goes, I may actually remove the AIO entirely and go for an air cooler, which would mean that we can put the 180mm fans back in the front and make the most of those. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is actually install the AIO first and see what the performance is like with that and then if I feel like it I might uh, remove it and then put in something like the NHU-12A and see whether the performance is worth it when we get those 180mm fans back in. So for now what I'm thinking we'll do is that we'll relocate the rad to the front of the Torrent Compact and then for the bottom mount intake, we can actually fit two of these 140mm Noctua fans that I've got in the front already down there and then use the 120mm NFA12 in the back. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to get this system gutted and put it in this case. Okay, so this is the build in its liquid cooled state. Now, obviously there are some things that are not optimal with this current configuration, and the fact that you can actually fit a 280 or even 360 rad in the front instead may make the 240 rad seem a little undersized in this case. But the temperatures are looking really good so far, and I'll get to the results later in the video, but now I think the best thing to do would be to swap this with an air cooler and reinstall the 108mm fans in the front and see whether the temperatures are any better. So, that went pretty smoothly. I'm actually quite happy with how the Noctua NHU-12A Chrome S Black looks in the Torrent Compact, so overall, not a bad swap. It's quite cool to have those 180mm fans back in the front, because they're just I've never seen any fans quite like that, as they're so huge. And right now, I've got it on my usual stock configuration for my case fans, and the amount of air that is actually being passed through is crazy. But now, the most important thing we need to find out is whether it is more worthwhile having the 180mm fans back in the front with an air cooler compared to having an AIO instead. So in both configurations, I've tested both the CPU and the GPU independently in stress tests to see exactly how much difference there is between the temperatures with both an AIO and an air cooler. And as you can see, there's actually a slight difference between the two configurations. Starting with our AIO configuration, our CPU saw a maximum of 65.5C, whereas our GPU hit 61.1C. Now, those temperatures in themselves are perfectly fine and aren't anything to be concerned about whatsoever, but when we switch over to our air cooling configuration, we can see a decrease from 65.5C down to 63.7C. Nothing to write home about, but still an interesting improvement with the addition of an air cooler and those two 180mm fans. However, the biggest difference comes with our GPU, which goes from 61.1C down to 57.8C, which is actually a pretty good improvement overall for the GPU. 
So overall from this testing, it seems that it is much better to go for an air-cooled configuration in the Fractal Torrent Compact. Now there are going to be exceptions, obviously the fact that we have better fans in the front compared to what it would be when we had the AIO installed is obviously going to be a factor when it comes to the testing, but considering this is the stock configuration for the Torrent Compact, obviously this is going to be something that most people are going to try and utilise to make the most of these really unique fans. If we're talking in terms of looks, I do quite like the look of an AIO in the system, but it does seem like it would be much better if we used the original fans that came with the case. Hopefully someday Fractor will realise how much people want to liquid cool in this case and decide to bring out a dual 180mm AIO, which is something I'm dreaming they'll do one day. But for now though, I'm pretty happy with how it looks and the NH212A is doing a great job in there so far and I quite like the look at the uh, Chromax heatsink as well just to make it look a little bit more sleek. I still absolutely love this case, but let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you're after more PC Jack content, then make sure to check out my Twitch channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more on myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while having to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all of those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.